it's interesting because I've seen on social media a few times now that you've shared photographs of yourself from like 10 years ago. Oh. Comparing it with where you're at now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Like in the last 10 years, what are some key moments you feel in that journey of getting from where you were to who you are now as a person? That's such a good question. And it stumped me. But um, I don't know. I find it so interesting. Like, uh, when in lockdown, actually, my flatmate, Bobby, I always say flatmate, but it's such a ridiculous word to call them because they're literally like, my life partner and like soulmate we're, pro- we're probably more like sisters to be honest but we when we were spending uh, lockdown initially we went up to my mum's house in just outside Aberdeen uh, just outside Stonehaven in the middle of nowhere and while we were there because my mum's just moved she had a bunch of like stuff she'd found so like old um, home videos and stuff from when we were little so I hadn't really, I don't know, I think about it periodically, but that, like, the beginning of last year when when we had all that material there, it was really interesting to sit and, I don't know, watch those videos, because it was like, I was watching parts of my life that I couldn't consciously remember until I'd saw it. And it was like seeing the person, like, I don't know, it felt like I was watching somebody else. And I was like, oh my God, I feel so sorry for her. Like, what a shame. Like, especially in like, in the Blue music video, we used an excerpt from the beginning of one of those home tapes where I was a lot older. Like There was ones ranging from when I was like zero to that was my primary seven prom, I believe. Um, so I was like 11, I think. But um, it was so surreal to watch. My mum was crying. She hated it. She was like, oh, no, you look so uncomfortable. I was like, yeah, I was. But I don't know. I just felt so much empathy. And I guess that it's easy to look back at your previous self it's all the crimes and dents <laughs> um, it's easy to look back at your previous self and just like I don't know cringe out and think that it's so embarrassing and I don't think I think I rarely look back at myself with empathy and I think that that's been an important journey to start <laughs> looking back with empathy and excusing yourself and not excusing yourself but more just like I don't know is it easier to have empathy for yourself though if you kind of almost see that person as a different human being like what you're saying there about yeah. how you kind of I mean part of the way you're saying about not being yeah, able yeah. to remember some of those things consciously but also just feeling like it's a completely different person definitely I think though it did, it did, it did feel like a different person but it also was like I could see like I was like I know that that little person is in there that's me but it, it did feel very odd but I think it is definitely easier with distance and I think as well when I was watching like a physical like video it was like you could see that person but often when you think about like your younger self you just have the image in your own head of that person that you remembered it as, um, which often, you know, your own memory of it is going to be completely different. Very contorted different. image, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but that what, what a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard that with songs as well, though? Do you ever hear back a song and you can't consciously remember writing it? Yeah, I feel like... I always used to think, like, how can people say that they do that? But then now that I've got older and like I've been doing it for longer, I guess, I have had that moment where I've like, just like silly stuff I've done like on my laptop or something where I've started something and then I've been like, oh, whatever, that's rubbish, I'll leave that. And then discovered it like a couple years later and been like, oh, that's so funny. Like, I I don't really remember it. But then like, there'll be certain things I'll be like, wait, hang on, no, I do remember doing that. And that's, I was at that point in my life, which is interesting to do, but, um. Yeah, it's always nice when you rediscover something in your voice notes that you're like, okay, that actually wasn't shit. I'm going to reinvent that. That's happened once or twice, but more than not, it happens where I'm like, oh, what's this? And then I listen and it's like something ridiculous that there was a reason that I forgot about it. <laughs> but yeah. Are there, do you think there are any aspects of yourself too that are you know very clearly present in your music today that were completely hidden? and that person of 10 years ago, when you look back at those videos? Yeah, definitely. I think, I don't know, it's difficult. Because I felt like at that age, there was so much I didn't know about myself, but like, it was almost like, well, not at that age, but like, even up until like 18 or a couple of years ago, there was so much I didn't know about myself. And it wasn't like, I was hiding parts of myself that I could never show anyone. It was that I, de- I genuinely didn't know. I hadn't seen 
in life those things before, like the types of people that I could be or, or um, where I could take influences from. And I guess that I felt like I didn't know who or what I could be. So I wasn't suppressing as much as I could because I didn't know it existed. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it's interesting because we started off this, I started off by asking about the kind of change that you've gone through, mm -hmm. but it almost sounds like less of a change and more like a, a discovery process and you're uncovering it. It was always yeah. there. It's not like something new that's been added. I definitely think so. And I think, I don't know, I always change between whether I think it's like a case of like discovering a part of you that's always existed or like, I don't know. But I think it must be. I think it must be. Because, um, I think you can change in certain ways, but I think that it's more about discovering the person you are and like what makes you feel more comfortable and and um, yeah, just like trying not to become anything else other than you know what what is already here and listening to what's already here. I think that's difficult because it's so easy to be so external about these things, but I'm trying harder to listen to my feelings in the moment and learn from that. <laughs> Have you developed any techniques to do that, to make that easier? Well, actually, funny you should say that. <laughs> I used to always write in my diary all the time and stuff like that, but I haven't been writing for so long, like just like diary stuff. And last night I was like, I'm going to start doing it again. So as of last night, I've been just like, I don't know, putting on an album and just like, writing exactly what I'm feeling and what what like you know the album brings up I was listening to the new Lord album last night because uh, I hadn't heard it yet and I'd seen everyone bitching about it online I was like right let me have a listen I actually really liked it like I thought it was quite I, I don't know it's difficult because I, I, I guess I didn't listen to it in the same way I usually do I would more listen to it like not listening to it more just like thinking about myself <laughs> and writing stuff so that was really nice just to be like in the moment and I've got my diary with me just now so I'm going to try and do more of that today and be at one with nature and in the moment, but yeah. As you've developed a clearer understanding of yourself and you know, you've uncovered these things, you've discovered them, how does that impact the way that you express yourself in songwriting? Does it change that in any way? Does it change the approach and the way you go about it? Yeah, definitely. I think that um, for me, I think songwriting is about allowing it to flow and I think I have the tendency to put a lot of pressure on myself to create and I think that that ultimately puts a block on it's like I, it's not even a conscious thing I think it's just like once that like feeling of the stress and the pressure is there my brain just doesn't doesn't think in that way I guess it's like the whole if you're constantly sitting in fight or flight the last and you like your body thinks that it's like genuinely a way to be killed or something the last thing it's going to want to do is sit down and write a tune so I think that I'm trying to get into the place where I'm not like incredibly anxious about the thing that I haven't created yet. So yeah, I think it's about letting that creativity flow and trying not to force it to happen is what I'm trying to do a lot more of and what these past few months have taught me. In a similar way to what you're doing with your diary and kind of just I letting guess emotions so. flow. Yeah, 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 just yeah. like trying to let it flow. I think that and much like what we were saying earlier, like I think it's all already inside you maybe. It's just about how to get it out and how to let it flow. And I think the harder you try, sometimes the harder it is to, to get something because you're like digging at the, like, the wrong part. You're not just allowing it to, yourself to feel. It's interesting what we were saying about the Lord album and the way that you were kind of viewing it through your own prism and what you yeah, were feeling. Yeah. Is that a similar thing with the sample that you opened the latest song with, the latest single that came out? Oh, that's so funny. So, uh, basically, I'll tell you the story about the um, the sample. Is it is it the one in Lately you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so basically, that song was created at the beginning of like I, I, I don't know if it was just before lockdown or like right at the beginning, but like the beginning of like 2020. And um, me and Bobby um, were writing it together. And there was like these sections where like, a, but actually, first of all, we had a, have you seen um, Big Boss India? Okay, yeah. well, <laughs> so there's this like uh, iconic clip from the queen herself, Pooja. Um, basically, there's just this, this clip where she's kicking a bin over. It's a whole thing, like it's a meme. And she's like screaming and 
Yeah, so we took a sample from that video and put it in these spaces and we're like, okay, that's hilarious, but like, we'll put this there until we find like something that we're going to use to fill that space. And it was like a few things like voice notes and stuff like that that we'd used like to fill that space because it just felt like I wanted this space to not be like singing, but I also felt like it was nice having some form of like audio sample so we were like okay we're just waiting until we find something that, that kind of works and then Bobby had been doing therapy over I, I think it was or maybe it was when it was in person I can't remember Bobby had voice recorded um, a therapy session that they had um, a wee while ago and there was some clips in there that, that, that worked really really well so we put them in and they were really really um, great it worked worked really really well and it was like the night before we were about to submit it for mastering. And we we're like, oh wait, we'd better check actually if we're allowed to use them. Like, I'm sure we are. Cause I'm sure we'd like kind of asked before, but not like officially asked, we was like, we might do this. Um, and then we're like, okay, let's send an email. Anyway, it turns out we were not allowed to do that. So we had like not long to figure out what we we're gonna do. And my mum does like some voiceover acting stuff. <laughs> So we're like, Mom, can you do this? And then we did it and we're like, do you know what? I think I prefer it like that anyway. Like, it was really nice having my mum say those like words that were really meant a lot. So it ended up being a nice little story of how that came about, but yeah. Did she change the emotion of it in any way or? Yeah, so that was actually, that was quite interesting. We recorded it quite a lot. So like, we had the, cause the whole, like therapy session was probably like, I guess like 50 minutes. So, and it was all in context kind of thing. So um, when we had my mum re-record it, we had her do it in lots and lots of different ways. And we didn't want to like try and recreate the kind of same thing. Cause then, you know, I wanted it to be like its own kind of thing in its own right, as my mum would say it and not like, as, as the therapist was saying it. Cause it, you know, I don't think it would work as well, but uh, yeah, but yeah, so it definitely the inflection did change, but for me, I, I ended up liking it better anyway, so. I know something that's interesting about that song and the singles that you've put out mm -hmm. at large is quite a lot of them are writing to a person and they're speaking to someone, yeah, it feels yeah. like. Do you ever find yourself having conversations or saying things in the songs that you wish you could say in real life, but you haven't? Yeah, 100%. I think um, it's that way where, you know when you always leave a conversation and you're like, oh, Damn it! I should have said Replay this. In your head. Like the guy with the like on the bus today that was like rude to me. I was like, oh, I should have. I could have got him there, but I just didn't. I just ran away. So I guess it's like I guess so. Like there's so many things that you wish you'd said, or like I don't know. Sometimes I think about it in a way of if I had the opportunity to say something to this person with no repercussions, like how would I want to say it? And not necessarily what would I want to say. Like what feeling do I want to get? Like what what do I want them to feel? Or what not them to feel, but like. I want to say how I feel, but like make them feel how I feel rather than the words. Cause yeah, I don't know. I definitely have wrote songs like that and we'll probably be doing that for a long time. <laughs> but yeah. Another thing I wanted to ask about, you know, we're kind of talking about the sample and that's on there. Yeah. I mean, Truba, how do you go about <clears throat> treating your vocals and how do you decide what effects you want to put on them and how you want to approach them? Yeah, so Lately was actually like the first um song that wasn't the the there was no like pitch correction or anything like i have nothing against pitch correction like pitch correct me all you like like i just want it to sound good you know like i i'm fine with how i sing but sometimes i think in stuff it just needs to be like sound sound tight and um sometimes you do need a wee tweak here and there but um i just wanted to have a go like try more organic because especially because the chorus of like lately has um like auto tune on on the like the like chorus vocals i really wanted to have like the verse vocals be really really raw and like not pitch perfect so that was really nice and like um i don't know i don't feel as repulsed by my voice as i used to like i feel like when you Every, like, you know, when you first hear yourself speak on a camera, you're like, Hoo! I used to get that with singing, but now I'm like, okay, no, I know what I sound like. Like I've listened to myself a million times. So it was nice, like hearing that. And I think that was my, my favorite vocal, like, is Bobby though. Bobby does all the, 
the mixing and the um, producing. Um, well, they did for Late Late um, anyway. And um, yeah, that was my favourite. But I'm excited like to do m more stuff and like experiment more with like vocal stuff. And yeah, I'm hoping that that's what this year is going to bring. But we'll see. Who was the last person you met that changed the way that you think about your own songwriting and your own creativity in quite a fundamental way? Oh my God. I don't know. Well, I, hmm. That's such a good question. I think that, I'm so stumped. Cause you know that way where it's like, yeah, you get asked to put a song on in, in a car and then suddenly you can't remember any song that you've ever played. Like, I can't remember anybody that I've ever met ever now. But, um, I don't know. I think what I'm going to say is my uncle, for like my birthdays and Christmases, always, always gets me a record. And um, quite often it's something I haven't ever listened to before or it's something I've listened I've like heard of and not actually ever like sat down and listened to so it's like always a good opportunity to um I don't know sit and just like be in that space but we haven't set our record player up yet in the new flat me and Bobby have just moved and everything's still in boxes it's been months now and we have no excuse but we haven't got the record player set up but I got a record for my birthday and I was like do you know what I'm gonna sit down and listen to this and it was um I can't remember what Laura Marling record it was, but I had been avoiding Laura Marling for a while because it made me so emotional and I was like, I can't, like, I just don't know if it's wise to put myself in that space right now, I'm too stressed. So, um, but I was like, no, I'm gonna listen to this album. And I think that that, I don't know, that felt like a moment for me of being like, okay, this is different, different kind of songwriting than I've been listening to recently anyway. So that was really nice and definitely gave me new perspective. Well, you mentioned there in regards to not wanting to put yourself in that emotional space, mm -hmm. you know, by listening to the album. Yeah. How do you overcome that when it comes to songwriting? It's difficult. Honestly, it's difficult because... Yeah, I feel like... I don't know, I'm get. I used to... I change. I change all the time because sometimes I think, um, you know, let's wallow in it, you know open the floodgates, I'm going to sit here and just like bask in all of this like emotion and like, oh, shouldn't have just touched that there. <laughs> all this emotion and just like let it, I don't know, let myself really feel it and almost like enjoy being in that place. And like there's times where I enjoy like doing that for songwriting, but also enjoy it like in terms of listening to sad music. But I think, I don't know, over the past year with everything, I've been like, Do you know, what? we've had too much. Like, come on, I can't be doing this. Like, I got to keep going. But uh, so I think I've just been like running away from like letting myself do that and just like, you know, writing songs that were maybe not as emotionally attached fun, but not not as like emotional in the ways that some other stuff I'd wrote had been. So um, I don't know, though, I think when you're ready, you're ready. And, and I try not to force it. But I think often I'd also have the tendency to run away and be like, no, I'm not ready. But actually, I am. I just, you know, it's um, procrastination sometimes. But yeah, it's always heavy, so you've got to be prepared. <laughs> thank you very much. No, thank you so thank much you. for having me. And uh, I don't know what I was going to say. Goodbye. <laughs>